Hello, welcome to Billy Bob's Album of the Month. For the month of May 2023, I chose to feature the new album We by the group APAT. It dro- the album drops on the 5th, so please make sure to check that shit out. Um, I was lucky enough to get a hold of General Mitty who answered a whole fucking list of questions for me. And we talked about all sorts of stuff, including the APAT movie. Um, Please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Click this bell thing over here for notifications. And uh, leave some comments down on that shit. Tell me me how I'm doing on this. Uh, I'm super curious. So we're about to transition transition into that shit right now. Enjoy. So tell me about the um, how APAT first became a band. <laughs> uh, APAT became a band after starting. I'm going to ramble straight away. Because uh, <laughs> it wasn't really meant to be a band. It was. A, it was. We were all in. I say we. There was a group of people, young people, in the twenties, aspirational, etc. And we were all in bands. And then we were not interested in trying to follow that kind of band thing. Specifically, like five of us, six of us, and we were all in each other's bands, as often people in their twenties are, and hanging around in houses. And I just got into recording a lot more. And I think I just started getting a lot more um, into like when people arrived, I just record them and do stuff. And that stuff became like, you know, a full, we were like making the masters of the tracks at the time. I'd, I'd make like a stupid goofy track and then that get mastered to tape. Because that's what the world was at the time. And then eventually there was this like a C90 tape of just these goofy tracks. And by that point, you know, it developed to make it, you know, that much material, it developed so much. And I think like a lot of us were more interested immediately into what we were doing with that than the actual bands we were, we'd spent a long time with. And it was quicker and it was more fun and it was more with our current tastes and all. So that was where that formed really. And it was, it was more like a, a recording project. For, for years and it was like we we treated it as like a secret as well because it was it was like we we did have like um i suppose uh not quite it wasn't quite as like thorough as that but as like a dogma or something but it was certainly like a constitution initially of just going we need to create this like secret sounding music that feels like ours or and it felt like, you know, because I don't know, there was a certain like flavor of like, you know, when you listen to the residents and it's a bit like naughty esque and it feels a bit like this is fucking stupid. And like, if you play it in front of someone, they're just going, why are you listening to this? And you're like, oh, you don't get it, man. You, it's that kind of stuff where, you know, there's something like wrong with this, but I'm a bit intrigued and in listening to it. And we were kind of like on that trip, I suppose. Um, and yeah, and it was just seeming like a more fun, uh, freer out because we were all from like, I mean, I was playing in a, a quite a technical metal heavy thing with noises and it was strange and odd time signatures and all that. And and certainly like reflects some of the music that is in APAT as well, but it was a lot more um, likable initially. You know, it was in a genre, even if it was quite wacky and all over the place. But this other stuff, because it you know, in this band, it was you were, um, you were allowed to play I think I think I think that was the big difference between uh, this band and other bands we've done play. If you know what I mean, in Allah like Sun City Girls or something like that, it was like you can you can it, there's an ongoing like ex, ex, uh, exploration of daftness, um, and you can be serious on the turn of a hairpin as well as well, which I think is important and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. Did, what was the question? Did I that was a ramble? That was a ramble. That, that was an appropriate ramble, and it covered okay, all, the, all the proper proper uh, domain. So, uh, yeah. so, 
is that how the the first DP came about uh, in two thousand and two? Yeah, I, I think so. Like all these things were getting. It was mastered to tape, and then there was another tape, and then there was a third tape, and then it was loads of little mini discs, and then CDR. Mini like, discs. You were, yeah, I mean, we were, I was big. I, I mean, this was all getting records on four track mini disc at the time as well, four track mini disc, and then eight track, and it was good. It was re- it was good. In fact, I think I I've spoken about this before, but like on the mini disc, there was like an A to Z marker point. Uh, and you could kind of make marker points at locate regions and you could say uh, loop A to B eight times, B to C. So you could arrange in it like a bit like a computer. So it was pre-computer sampling days. Um, and I think that informed the band because there was you could do like a beat, add bass, loop, and then the bass and drums looped because you've looped all these eight tracks. So it was kind of like this loop machine before that was a thing. And nobody was really using it as that when I've spoke to people over these aware of this feature, but it was it was fucking great. And the editing was all just on the box. Do 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 do. I loved it. I don't have it now. I wouldn't. Um I hate it. Um Yeah, it was great. <laughs> what was the question? It was that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That and, and also so 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 um yet CDRs appeared. And it's like, yay, we're we're all record labels now. You know that that did change things i was really in that trip of the world's changed that's it we can press things we're pressing plants it's like having a pressing plant in your you know and um yeah um so i guess there was a few cdr things before and then uh, i think we thought why don't we just do and say it's a release why don't we just do that and i was making it like i mean, I mean half of the initial aesthetic uh, the use of courier font and the use of like black and white, all these things are to do with like a standardized thing that at the time I was quite keen on being able to use recycled things and things that uh, uh, are not costing money. You know, that was that was a key a key aspect. Um, so it was also like subverting standardization things. So American typewriter font, you know, can be done on a typewriter. So it was initially all typewriters and things like that. You know, it was it was done that way. And um the initial logo, I don't think I've ever said this. The initial logo was like um, made all that use of like uh, text and splurge was initially from like a bulk dump from a printer, which uh, a friend of ours had worked at. Um, I think it was like a health, it was like NHS uh, labeling distribution thing. And they had a machine which would just bulk dump out all this junk. And we'd just get thousands of these stickers with this splurge on, and I'd handwrite a pat onto every single one of them. And I've only got like, you know, a handful of the original stickers left, but they're all based on stuff that I used to just get access to. And I had millions of them. So that was like, that's well, you know, that's the band then. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, yeah. And all, um, so like the first EP even though the cover was like a design of that crap, that was already like stuff we'd been using for years and years, but actual versions of it. And the, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I think um, part of how the, 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 the APAT has existed is it kind of just rolls and collects things on the way. So like it's, it's lots of ideas from lots of people, basically every single ex, ex person who's been in the act has left a little something behind that gets, probably used again at some point because it's developed like what it you know what the fuck is the band well it's everyone who's been in it isn't it really i suppose you know um yeah <laughs> it's the arrogance of youth with then like a collection of learned behavior <laughs> i want to go with that yeah. So then in uh, 2004, you went on to release the full, the, the LP, right? Uh, yeah, so on, on LP, by that time, we'd collated enough um, people slightly interested in our city. And we were playing enough and we were running a, like a, a regular like a residency at some uh, club night called Useless, where we play upstairs and it was filled with weirdos and freaks and stuff like that. Every Tuesday, it was one of those things. Ran by a, a, a gentleman who's now in the band, uh, and that's Ash, who's been in the band for eight years or something now. So, yeah. 
Uh, but he used to run that night with his other man. And um, the person who ran that invested money. He said, ah, I will invest in the records. And we were like, oh, cool, yeah. And then we paid, uh, and it was it was actually the venue owner, and we ended up paying him back in like two pences and things like that. It was it, it, it took for fucking ever to, to sort of, but that was somebody who put that. So, and like, for some reason, the joke at the time was, let's do it, make, do it exactly the same as the last thing then. <laughs> so like, if you look at the cover, it's like, you know when you get like um, Evil Dead Two and it's like a remake of the first one and it's like that it was like that idea of going let's because even though it was like paid for and it could be full color and it could have been good it was like a good joke to make it feel exactly the same quality as this thing that we'd made because I didn't want to change the aesthetic we'd spent ages on it I think I think that's what was going on anyway um, yeah that that was a hard one to do because I don't think we we shouldn't have done an album I think on hindsight it should have been a few more EPs really to try and get to figure out what an album should have been because i don't know if that hits the spot the way it should do although it's kind of it's fine it's fine now it's fucking really strange listening back to it but yeah I, i've been speaking about like that that way since it came out so like nothing's changed really so um <laughs> yeah. yeah and then what's after that what came from that uh you released a free EP in 2005. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's good. So that started like a different way of working, I think. Because um, that by that point, our uh, digital like kind of inclusion into... Oh, look at that cat. Let's have a look. What, what's the cat's name? Cheese. 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 That cat looks like a cheese. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> The name, the name was drawn out of the hat, I, and uh, when it the came to my it. turn, when it came to my turn, all the kids told me that they would not call the cat Schrodinger if that's what was pulled. So at the last second, I decided to write cheese down for some reason, and that's the cheese cat's name. Means. Cheese. Yeah. The cat that got the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um it had a kitten, and we named it Moon. So the moon is made of cheese. That's good too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that is good. But um, but I, dig- I I I distracted us. What was I saying? Something about music, probably. Pro- it it might have you- been. We might have been talking about the free EP and your different approach towards. Uh, of, uh... Oh, that was. Um... Yeah, that was more of like a time a time based experiment. It was like let's see if we can. So there's something about that as well. Like um, we were just on this. So all of it is borrowed material, right down to how it was made. So it was kind of borrowed lyrics, borrowed samples, uh, forms from other things, poems, this, that, the other, quotes from films, all in a, like a, a mish, mash mash up before mash up had been mash up, and. Right, right down to like it was made with like a one ninety nine mic from like the supermarket and crack software and it, it so and also like you know when you like sometimes when you're writing things you're very like you're a little hands off sometimes and just go you know let, let, let's honor the art or honor the riff and sometimes you you're thoughtful about how you approach things and that records was like the opposite of just like just keep just piling on shit. Just like really go for it and see how like you because it was about deconstruction and reconstruction and you know um yeah there's no end to how you could do that and part of the process was this you know continuing messing around with so like i think we learned a lot of how to um do post work into the tracks more and how to perceive how to um from the conception of the writing involved it. Um, and because the computer thing had become more like apparent and I was learning it more and all that. So I was kind of a- addicted to this thing of, here's a full release where we get to do that. Cause often you're like, how do we do this live? Or should we do it live? Or is that, is the two versions, you know, there, there's often just like these questions. Whereas that one was like, there's no reason to play any of this. Let's just fucking go bananas on it. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And I think like part of that was like trying to carry whatever that happened there was trying to carry that into the live stuff a bit more as well and include some of the, the what you'd expect as post manipulation normally in the studio. Can we include that somehow on, in, in the live thing with some stuff? 
Um, and that, that's, I started getting quite into that as well. And then during that, we were also write, we were still writing and we were writing for the next record, which was Black and White Mass. And like, we, we knew that that was going to be um, serious and like considered, but it was also going to be using a lot of this kind of playfulness in the studio, like to the hilt. And, and like at the time, and I think we said it at the time, and I, I, like it was supposed to be, you know, if you if you're relating it to it, like your Beatles thing, this is the Sergeant Peppers or whatever, because we were going, let's just really be as classy as possible when possible, and throw it away as well if you need. But also, it's going to be so rich and 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 filled with with depth or whatever, and 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 hopefully like leaning somewhere on a bridge between what we were doing in the past, which was quite folk and like. A uh, weird Britain folk thing to, to maybe a bit more fidelity and maybe a bit more. Oh, there's a rock track and here's some pop because we were because we all the other bands what we'd done prior were those things really. And like the early stuff was a complete like throwaway of ignoring all that. And I think around that point, we started bringing all our other stuff that we'd done as well into the band. Uh, so it was becoming like more normal and strange and considered and throw, you know, it was becoming more of more. Um, and maybe that's where it's always been on the point of since, um, really, because it's like meant to be drawing in every possible for the song. And as long as you can kind of guarantee what the song is, which sometimes you don't till you're halfway there at the end or whatever, it doesn't matter at what point you realize that, but it's always something about drawing, uh, drawing things in from wherever you know and learning to get to another point. And the new material we're working on that, we've only just released this record. I'm like, I think we've done another one already. And we're doing so much at the moment because in just in rehearsals for getting going for the Rex, you know, tour and stuff, we've been, you just want to write new things. So we have done. And I, again, I'm just very pleased where everything's going because it's nice to be one ahead. Um, and and just the, little, the little breakdown in that little pandemic has given us that little catch up time, I think, um, and and to regroup and change, change how we work as well. So that's been very very, very useful. Um, yeah, black and white mask. That was that was um, that was our Sergeant Peppers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that that album was great. It was one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Um... Tell me a bit about the the Nosferatu. How did all that go down? Yeah, um, that was a commission by BBC Radio, um, and at the time there was uh, there was a series of like I think it was like four, thirteen or fourteen large screen things that were in city centres in Liverpool. like there's one in Liverpool, one in Manchester, one in Birmingham, and they were just everywhere. I think it was sponsored by the Olympics or something or other at the time. Um, and the plan was that we were to broadcast our, our film soundtrack to the original film and it would be shown on all these screens across the whole of England at the time, uh, which happened. Um, and so we went, to, we, um, that particular version we done not, the reason it happened is because we performed Nosferatu three times. Uh, the first time was at, like we were commissioned by somewhere, like a film night, and it was a silent film night. Will you do this? And they they told us to do it, um, and we were like, yeah, sure, definitely. And we just did an improvised score, and it was really fun. But we just improvised, and then someone seen that, and then they asked about about two years later. We were asked, hey, we saw your thing. Of, would you would you like to do that? And we went, yeah. So we put a little bit more effort into it. We got a theme or two. And we improvised around that. Someone else saw it. And then we got this commission by, it was by um, the PMS show, which is in Radio Merseyside, which is about to go, sadly, uh, after 20, 26 years or 48 years as, as a main show or some shit. Because um, the BBC structure changed, but let's not talk about that. I met with the guy this afternoon. It's very sad. Um, but they asked us to do it. And then we had six months planning of it. And it was like, it was like we wanted, I mean, you were about this getting broadcast. So we spent like six months working on that and that the, the, the album version is live there's, there's, no, there's not a single overdub and that is how it went out on the night and it was broadcast on these huge screens across england and apparently it was cool but we were we were in a studio doing it so we were not part of anything and during the film um there's funny stories attached to it if you like during the film there was like uh fade-ins of us playing over the stuff during like the the the, the, the film which were in like little corners of the thing 
Um, apparently somebody complained and then we got like a complaint from the BFI about like, you know, meant to tamper with people's film. It, it was awkward, really awkward, even though we'd had permission. Um, and I'm not going to say who did it, but it was, it was, it was just really awkward. Um, but it was a really nice experience and it's a pretty good album. It stands up. If you've ever watched the film, have you watched it with the film alongside? I have, I have. Cool. What, what, what did you think? No one ever talks about that. So thanks for even asking about it. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. It it, I mean, it 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 was almost like the the Pink Floyd uh, uh, Wizard of Oz thing. Only only better because it it did coincide. You know, does it does it work the Pink Floyd thing though? Because I've tried that and I don't remember that working. It works the first time through, and then after that, it's, yeah, it depends I, how many drugs you've had, doesn't it? Because like you swear it's working for a bit, and then you think. No, no, that's not it. That's not in time. That's not doing it. Did you do it at the third Lions Road or whatever it is? Yes, 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 I did. <laughs> well, you can, see, what it is is you can you can uh, you can get up on the YouTube and it's already set up now where you can just watch. Ah, it of course it is. I haven't thought about this. Oh, I'll yeah. do this. One. I'm gonna, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's 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 principally the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I enjoyed doing that. Would you mind if I top up this glass? Won't be okay. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go get some coffee while you do that. Okay. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Yeah, I needed that. Foaming nut brown ale. Okay, so let's move on to uh, Paul. Oh, yeah. 2012. And Paul, Paul, the rec Paul the record, as we call it. Paul. Paul. Um, Paul is... Be uh, does a, why does Paul exist? Paul exists because it was a response to Ogadimmer. However, they came out the other way round. Mm -hmm. um, Ogadima was completed prior. Ogadima is a cool name. Uh, and Paul was desirable because it was not it was it was it was an uncool name. Uh, so but unfortunately because it came out before it, the joke doesn't really exist to anyone except two two to seven people or something. I don't know. But it was a response to like the fantasticalness of the phrase Ogadimmer, I suppose. And it was to counterbalance it with Paul. Uh, and it was uh, Upset the Rhythm, who had a cool cool label in London, and he got in touch and said we want to do it. We would he does a split series. And on that split series he'd worked with things like Deer Hoof and Drum Eyes and a couple of other, like things we like. Um we said yes. It was actually a recording, on hindsight, it was a recording offered to us in a studio, uh, the Southern Records uh, studio, which I think is closed, Southern Lords site, a studio now, I think it's closed. And it was with someone wonderful. And I think we were just not capable of going to a studio at the time, because we would, we'd got into this weird way of work. And I think the idea of going to a studio and just playing our songs wasn't something we could do, because we'd spend years tweaking shit so, so I got kind of weirded out, and rather than and rather than go and have this wonderful experience, which on hindsight I'm like, oh, I wish we'd gone and done that. That must that would have been great with him. Um, we didn't do it, and I just made it. We just made it ourselves and sent and sent a full thing. So it was like the cheapest record ever made, you know. And it, and like it's it's indicative of how we've unfortunately like put ourselves into corners since then. But but we did it. It was great, uh, and it was a split. On the other side were lovely and people. We played with them a few times. It was nice, nice. That was that. 14 minutes. It feels like a lifetime. That, that's only one side. For a split record, I think there's like, it feels like an album. I don't know. I'm not sure what happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, not much to report on that. Just a quick one. And it was kind of in the same, I, I really classed that same as like Ogadema because they were in the same thing. And as I say, Ogadema came prior. And Ogadema was a, uh, we were playing an awful lot in Leeds. 
And some of our friends had a label and they said, hey, would you want to do a record for our label? And we said, yeah. And we started working on this record and then they said, hey, we're not doing the label. And we went, oh, you're not doing the label. And then we had this record and we were like, oh, fucking hell, we've got this record. And then it was kind of done. But we went really like, oh, that's the record we should release. So we were kind of, what should we do with that? And it just kind of sat around for a bit. And then during that time, I was like, oh, maybe I'll make, maybe I'll make some like videos for some of them. And then by the end, I was like, maybe we'll make videos for every single one of them then. <laughs> so we did that and spoke to some friends and said, will you make the, and so we got this whole package of like, now that makes sense of a record. That's good. Um, and it was eventually, we, we, we play a lot in France and our booker said, well, he'd like to press it. So it was pressed by, by anger, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, spaces between them all. Um, yeah, so that, that, that that happened that way and it's got like a dvd with it and so on and so forth and it's quite a nice little juicy little package it was the album that should never have existed as an album but it's quite nice but there you go you're like wow, wow. And it took years to come out i think it was completed in 2010 2011 and it took to like 2013 to come out somewhere Is that right? october of 2012. there you go i wonder <laughs> who said that <laughs> I wonder uh, if that's right. it's probably me but that date and i probably got it wrong uh, according to uh it was a uh, band camp that's full of shit that that's that's only just me logging in drunk <laughs> <laughs> i don't um there's proof of it somewhere but i don't know where the real deal is of, of dates is it's just all lies I, I've, I've lied from the upset it's the wiki page that's me as well so, yeah yeah <laughs> it, it, it's, all, it's all lies it's all lies that's why we got this mm. that's why i got this going on I, I this is lies as well I this is this is the drunk biggest lie on. oh yeah you you are drinking. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Um, yeah, which takes us on to uh, uh, that's twenty thirteen. So the next one's twenty sixteen. That'd be fun with music. Yeah, we have so. Which your wiki page for some reason says twenty fifteen fucking bullshit i think it was finished in 2015 i think it was uh i released it was march 2016 that is fact um and that's a that's that that was consolidating a lot of things i think i think like i think by that point there'd been a certain amount of yeah exactly like e even indicatively in the title i think it's like a certain amount of experimenting had ended and it was more like I think I know. I think I know what the what a record should be now. Um, certainly, what this record should be. Um, so it's it's concise and it's focused, and I, I think I think it stands up. I think it's all right. Sick of playing the songs on it, like some of them. Yeah. We played loads of them. Yeah, um, I, I love that album. It's it's concise. It's concise, um, and it marks something because like everything that's been done because I record it all as well. I go bonkers like over the stuff that it's around it in the period because there's usually a lot of tracks that don't get used and a feeling and ideas and it's a bit unusual to just leave them behind sometimes but they, they're locked in that time frame and there was a lot of stuff that had happened between as i say it took years to come out it was finished years before that so paul and paul was done really quick just as quick let's make some songs and really, there's only like three songs on that, and then there's lots of little ideas. Um, it's, it's, it is a, a B-side, you know, uh, like a split thing or whatever. So Fun Music was a real, I wanted to have so much depth and so much like confidence in each track and so much meaning of like, um, trying to be a little bit more emotional as well in certain areas with the lyrics rather than just being jovial about stuff and I don't know, yeah. Getting older. <laughs> You've got nine minutes, 56 seconds. Fuck! Yeah, yeah. That means that we might not be able to talk about the wonderful APAT movie. <laughs> mm. Oof. Uh, yeah, I mean, we lost members over that. Um, uh, there, there's been a, that was the, m much debated generally. Um, yeah, have you have you watched that? <laughs> yes, yes, I've watched that. So. <laughs> tell, tell me <laughs> your. Well, well, I, I I'm a little traumatized by uh, Santa Claus now. 
you know, but that's the point. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but, but I can, I can move on. Yes. Yeah. It, it's in all of us that thought. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's parallel with like uh, stockings and tangerines. If you think about it. <laughs> um, yeah. That was an experiment in movie making. It took six years to make that. It took fucking years. <laughs> Took fucking forever, absolutely did, and like it started as a, obviously like improvisations, which led to a thing. Um, and it, again, it's just learning, learning how to make. Can you make a full length feature film? Was the was was the query? Like I was, the aim was like you know, um, you'd get a video VHS, and it's like it, all films on VHS seem to be like an hour and forty four minutes, an hour and forty four, and because the spool length, an hour and forty four. Um, so this the aim of this was we've got to have an hour and forty four. That was that was the key. That was the, literally the aim. Um, I love it, but it's 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 a bit harder to watch as I get older. Um, and I'd never make that again. You know, no one would make that. And it, it, a, a lot of the uh, the blame goes towards other people as well. It's not just it's not just me. There's a lot of other filmmakers on there. <laughs> and look at it yourself. I can't be asked to explain it again. But like, yeah. And like I told you last time, I still think you should uh, approach Troma <laughs> to get a DVD release of it. You did say that, and that's a good idea. Why didn't I follow that up? I know someone who's connected to that in some way. One, yeah, I'm fucking write right. that shit down, man. That's a fucking good idea. I know someone who knows a friend of mine. A friend in the band had a track on a, on a chicken. What's the chicken thing? I don't know. What it's called. It would be poultry geist. That's the fucking one. Yeah, <laughs> you do know your trauma. <laughs> yeah, they're on that zombie in the skeleton. Shout out. Trauma. Yeah, I'm writing that down. Fuck off, man. Yeah, Lloyd Kaufman. Kaufman. Yeah, get a hold of that guy. Yeah. He'll help yeah, us. Is that, it's still going like strong, right? Oh yeah, yeah. They have Trauma TV, which is a streaming service that you could just watch any trauma movie now. Oh shit! Okay, I'm gonna lock yeah. off. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and and let's uh, let's spend about one minute talking about the APAT Lifestyle Challenge channel show. That was your thank pandemic you outlet. Yeah, thank you again for being maybe the third person to have mentioned such a thing. Um, it's great. I love that. That's the inside of our heads. That um, there's, and 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 if 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 ever people want any more, I can make loads of that. <laughs> yeah, that could yeah. be a weekly thing. Yeah, um, I, was, I, was, I was quite proud when he finally figured out how to play the cabbage. I had so Good. much anxiety beforehand, you know, but <laughs> he, he figured it out and we're and it, and it made me happy. Yep. And if you come see us live, there's every chance he might be playing that cabbage. Shit. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. That's why yeah, I, true. That's why I suggest you stream some of your live shows, but you know, <laughs> it's hard. I'm going to figure something out. We go on tour uh, from May 26th to June 18th in France alone. And I'm going to try and do something. There's nothing else to do on tour than drink and play, so at least I can figure out some technology to kind of keep me amused for an hour. So if I can figure out a way of getting in, and most of the spaces we play have a wifi, so I will say, can I use your wifi? And then we will plug in, and I, if I can put a thing on it, I will try and stream the shows, because why not? And it'll be shit quality, but it'll be better than nothing, right? And it might be from, like, like just from the back of a neck shot. <laughs> and it might be hot and steamy. But that, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, so, yeah, you're going to be touring uh, for the new album, uh, We, which comes we. out on uh, the 6th? 5th, officially. Fifth. Yeah, 5th, officially. But we're, we're, we're going to do it. You've got an exclusive. Uh, we're going to do a show in the 6th in Liverpool, but we've not told anyone yet. Uh, just as a quick little sneaky thing with some people uh, who are friends of ours, who are yeah, is going to play. Uh, so is the ladies and the radiator. And so is uh, Bearcat Gumbo. Uh, and we're going to play that, try some sacks from that, little private show, essentially. Um, then we're going to continue our practicing to the tour. And hopefully I have a box full of records. I get them next week. I get them next week. I had the test pressing the other day. It sounds good. Pleased with that. Final CD, etc. Pleased. Good. Job done. Um, it's nice. I like it. Pleased with it. 
What's she say? I don't know. Yeah, it's great. I, 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 I've been digging it. I've been digging it. I've played it through a good uh, three dozen times, you know, while I'm tell, out working. Tell me things. You, you, you have uh, four minutes 33 to tell me things about it. Um, <laughs> as a perving musician person, what is your being experience? Second I, listen. I, I believe um I believe it flows quite well. I believe it flows quite well. Um I was uh, I was a little uh having heard uh, several of the tracks uh, previously, I was wondering how you were gonna four of them, yes. I was wondering how you were gonna work them into it, and I was pleased to see that all of them did make it in there because I always get disappointed when a band releases a track on like the band camp or something and then they release their next album and it's not there and it's like, well, How's that going to make its way into my rotation if it's just a standalone track, right? So yeah, I am, killer. I am pleased that they've all made it in there, right? Uh, yeah, uh, I I love uh, shit. I could go through the album with you, but no, come on, come a, on. a couple minutes, right? Now you start off with the 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 first track. Um, the I like how uh, it jumps from from that uh, complex uh, uh, you the. Uh, off time signatures into like you almost could go to it like a uh thief music towards the end of that track. I find that interesting when Did you say thief? thief uh piccolos like uh oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 it's it's piccolo yeah it's piccolo yeah piccolo yeah people don't use enough piccolo nowadays uh, that is Empress Play in the band she is a shit hot piccolo player you don't get many of them so that doesn't do you no, 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 no. <laughs> Utilize more piccolo. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a lot of it in the new set because it cuts through like fucking that. I mean, that's why people have traditionally used it. It cuts through anything. If you put it on an SM58, it'll basically like burn a hole in the PA because it's like 2K. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Good. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. And um, yeah, it, it really... uh. Really set the tone for the album, <laughs> right? Uh, not enough piccolo. <laughs> Make a note of that. Make uh, a note. That was also it's worth mentioning. That was mixed by Udi Kumran. Uh, so there's two tracks on the album that are mixed by him. Uh, that one and another one called Porker. Um, and Udi Kumran has worked with some awesome acts, and it's the first time we've had a single track on any record mixed by somebody else. Uh, uh, never mind two. So that's cool, don't you think? I don't know. I think that's cool. I think that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I like how you ended the album heavy, like, uh, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, Doom Two was it? Was that the track? Doom yeah, Hell on Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, great shit, great shit. Did you play a lot of Doom Two as a as a, in your youth? Of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a part of anyone who's used their thumbs for things, yeah. Hope I don't want to give it away, but there may or there may not be an emulation coming out. <laughs> That's all I'll say. 